Okay, so this problem reads, the archer fish hunts by dislodging an unsuspecting insect from its resting place with a stream of water expelled from the fish's mouth. Suppose the archer fish squirts water with an initial speed of 2.3 meters per second at a beetle on a leaf 3 centimeters above the water's surface. If the fish aims in such a way that the stream of water is moving purely horizontally when it hits the beetle, what is the launch angle of the water? How much time does the beetle have to react? And what is the horizontal distance between the fish and the beetle when the water is launched? Pretty complicated problem looking at two-dimensional motion and pretty cool that the archer fish knows how to do his physics so to get his food. So. All very cool stuff. All right, so let's think about what we're interested in analyzing and what defines our motion. Okay, so what is our object? Well, the object is that stream of water. So we think of the stream of water as like a pellet of water being shot towards the beetle, knocking them to the ground so the archer fish are to the pond so the archer fish can eat them up. And what defines our initial condition and what defines our final condition? So when do we start caring? Well, we start caring when the um, water is expelled. So the water is expelled from the fish's mouth. And we stop caring when it hits the beetle. Now, there are some rules to that hitting, remember. It's moving purely horizontally at that time when it hits the beetle. Okay, so we want to keep that in mind. All right, so let's think about this problem. We have water flying through the air. It's the only thing that we care about, so it's one object. It's flying through the air, so it's in free fall, so it's single phase, one acceleration. And since it's flying through the air, we're dealing with two dimensions. So two dimension, one object, single phase problem. All right, let's draw a picture, make sure we understand what's happening. So here's our fish, and it's going to squirt water at some unknown angle. We don't know what the angle is. And here's a little bug sitting on a leaf. All right, so there's the leaf. It tells us that the leaf is three centimeters above the water, so we know that this distance is three centimeters. All right. So in any two-dimensional motion problem, we have to define our origins, both vertically and horizontally. So let's define the initial vertical position at the level of the fish, so the water surface, and the initial horizontal position at the location of the fish. So, and therefore, the beginning of the water's motion for both horizontal and vertical. Well, if we know the initial vertical position is zero here, the vertical position at this location is 3.0 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.03 meters. And it's really important that we convert those centimeters to meters. So practice your conversions if you aren't sure where I got that 0 0.03 meters. And we have to keep it in meters because we're going to use an acceleration that uses meters. So we want to make sure our units stay consistent within our math. All right, now let's look at the horizontal and vertical motions. So we have x initial horizontal, x final horizontal, v initial horizontal, v final horizontal, acceleration horizontal, and time. And we have x initial vertical, x final vertical, v initial vertical, v final vertical, acceleration vertical, and time. All right. So, our initial position horizontally is zero meters. Our final position horizontally, we don't know, we're not given that information. Our initial velocity horizontal, we don't know. We know he's moving horizontal, so there is one, but we don't know what it is numerically. I'm going to come back to that. We don't know the final, but we do know that these are the same because horizontally we know that it's at zero meters per second. And we don't know the time. Now let's go in our vertical direction. So vertically, we are starting at that zero point. We're ending at the fish. Remember, we're, we know we hit the fish, 
So we are at 0 0.03 meters in our final position. We don't know our initial vertical velocity. What about our final vertical velocity? Turns out we know it. Tells us we're moving purely horizontally at that time. If we're moving purely horizontally, then our final vertical velocity is zero. So we are given that value in the premise of the problem. Our acceleration is that which is due to gravity, so we know that value, and we don't know time. All right. Now, the only other thing we want to think about is we don't know the vertical or the horizontal, but we do know that they're related to this initial vertical velocity. So if we call this, sorry, this initial velocity, if we call that velocity v, well, we know that there is a horizontal component and a vertical component for velocity v. And using our trigonometry, that horizontal component is v times the cosine of whatever angle the object is being shot at. And we're told that it shoots the water at 2.3 meters per second. So this is 2.3 times the cosine of that angle. Remember, we're told that he shoots at some angle of 2.3 meters per second. And similarly, the vertical velocity is the velocity times the sine of whatever that angle is, which we don't know, 2.3 times the sine of the angle. We just want to keep that in mind because we're actually interested in the angle that's being shot in part one. So we have to be able to relate our motion to that angle. Okay, so what are we interested? We're interested in the angle. Well, that angle is a part of our velocity values, and so we're going to go after our velocity. If we look at our vertical direction, Okay, if we look at our vertical direction, we know that v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta x. That might help us get somewhere. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. It might complicate things, but let's see where it goes. v final squared is 0. v initial squared, I don't know, but I do know it's 2.3 times the sine of the angle squared. That equals 2 times the acceleration of negative 9.8 times x final, 0 0.03 minus x initial of 0. Oops, this is plus. Plus. All right, well, hmm, can I solve for the sine of the angle? I think so. So if I bring, well, let's, let's simplify this term. I have 0 is equal to 2.3 sine of theta squared. I'm going to keep that as a square. Minus 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.03. That's 0 0.588. Two times, yep. Bring that to the other side. I have 0 0.588 is equal to 2.3 times the sine of the angle squared. And I'm going to take the square root, and I end up with 0 0.767 is equal to 2.3 times the sine of the angle. Divide by 2.3, I get 0 0.333 is equal to the sine of theta. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.333. So if I take the inverse sine of that, I get theta is equal to 19.5 degrees. All right, so now I know my angle of launch. Well, if I know my angle of launch, then I can get my velocities. I can plug this into here. All right, so the vertical velocity is 2.3 times the sine oops, of 19.5, and that's 
767. And the horizontal velocity is 2.3 times the cosine of 19.5, and that's 2.17. All right, so now I have my values for velocity. And I'm going to leave them in a different color just as a reminder that these are calculated values. So if there's a mistake, it could be in the actual number itself. Okay. All right, the next part of the question is how much time does the beetle have to react? So that's the time of our motion. Okay, well, I could use a number of relationships to find time. I'm interested now in time in either dimension. So let's use the vertical dimension. We know that V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. My V final is zero. V initial I've determined is 0 0.767 plus negative 9.8 times t. So I bring my 0 0.767 to the other side, and I can solve for my time. So 0 0.767 divided by 9.8. Oh, that poor beetle has 0 0.078 seconds Whew, to react. He must react very quickly. And then the final question says, what's the horizontal distance? Well, that's my final position horizontal. So I'm interested in V, X final horizontal. So X final horizontal is equal to X initial horizontal plus V initial horizontal T plus one half A horizontal T squared. I'm interested in this value, I don't know it. Zero plus my velocity horizontally times 0 0.078, and that term is zero since our acceleration is zero. So solving for my final position, I get x final horizontal is equal to 0 0.169 meters, or 16.9 centimeters away. All right, so lots of work on this one. Lots of recognizing where we can capitalize on information we know. Okay, Understanding that we're in two dimensions at an angle, that I have initial velocities in both dimensions contributing to my motion. The trick, recognizing that if I'm moving purely horizontal at the time I hit that beetle, my final vertical velocity is zero. I, if I'm moving purely horizontally, I don't have anything vertical. So that gives us information that wasn't necessarily explicitly told, but that we had to use our physics understanding to obtain. All right, good job.